In the casting process for the 1940 movie Waterloo Bridge, MGM Studio aimed to find the perfect actors to bring depth and authenticity to the story's characters. The film's lead roles were awarded to Vivian Lee as Myra, a struggling ballerina, and Robert Taylor as Roy, a British officer. Vivian Lee, an accomplished British actress, was a natural fit for the role of Myra. Lee had already made a name for herself in Hollywood with her captivating performance in Gone with the Wind. MGM saw her potential to portray the complex character of Myra, who turns to prostitution to survive during World War I. Lee's ability to convey vulnerability and strength made her the ideal choice for the part. Robert Taylor, an American actor, was selected to play Roy, the wealthy and compassionate British officer who falls in love with Myra. Taylor's good looks and charming demeanor made him a popular leading man in Hollywood. His previous roles in films like Camille and The Yank at Oxford showcased his ability to play gentlemen with depth and sensitivity, making him a perfect fit for Roy. The chemistry between Lee and Taylor was crucial for the film's success. To ensure that the two actors had the necessary on-screen connection, MGM arranged for them to spend time together offset. They attended events and dinners together, allowing them to build a rapport that would translate to their on-screen relationship. During the audition process, both Lee and Taylor demonstrated their ability to convincingly portray their characters' emotional journeys. They underwent extensive rehearsals to perfect their performances, focusing on the film's dramatic scenes and romantic moments. One pivotal moment in the casting process was when Lee and Taylor were paired together for a screen test. Their undeniable chemistry and strong individual performances convinced MGM that they were the right actors for the leading roles in Waterloo Bridge. In summary, the casting process for Waterloo Bridge focused on finding actors who could embody the complexities of the film's characters and create a convincing on-screen chemistry. Vivian Lee and Robert Taylor's proven acting abilities, coupled with their undeniable chemistry, made them the ideal choices for the lead roles in this classic wartime romance. Mervyn Leroy, the director of Waterloo Bridge, was known for his versatile storytelling, often choosing melodrama and romance as his genres of choice. In this 1940 classic, Leroy aimed to create an emotionally charged atmosphere, focusing on the tragic love story between Myra, a ballerina, and Roy, a soldier, amidst the backdrop of World War I. Leroy's creative influences stemmed from his background in the early Hollywood studio system, where he learned to balance story, character, and visual style. He was particularly interested in capturing the emotional turmoil of his characters, often using close-ups and dramatic lighting to emphasize their feelings. In Waterloo Bridge, Leroy collaborated closely with cinematographer Joseph Ruttenberg, who shared his vision for creating a visually striking film. Together, they used high contrast lighting and shadows to enhance the film's moody atmosphere. Leroy also worked with art directors Cedric Gibbons and Paul Gross to design the film sets, which reflected the opulence of pre-war London and the stark reality of the war-torn city. Leroy's approach to directing actors was characterized by his empathetic and collaborative nature. He encouraged his cast to explore their characters' emotions, often engaging in lengthy discussions with them about their motivations and backstories. In Waterloo Bridge, Leroy's collaboration with Leeds Vivian Lee and Robert Taylor resulted in a powerful and poignant portrayal of a love torn apart by war and circumstance. Leroy's vision for Waterloo Bridge was to create a timeless romance that would resonate with audiences long after the film's release. By focusing on the emotional depth of his characters and creating a visually striking world, Leroy succeeded in bringing this classic love story to life. Waterloo Bridge is a classic 1940 film that has stood the test of time. It tells the story of a ballerina who falls in love with a soldier, but their love is threatened by the outbreak of World War II. The film is known for its powerful performances, romantic storyline, and stunning cinematography. There are many surprising facts about this movie that will leave you laughing, shocked, and maybe even tearful. For instance, did you know that the film's director, Mervyn Leroy, originally wanted Vivian Lee for the lead role, but she turned it down? or that the film's iconic dance scene was actually performed by a professional ballerina, not the film star, Vivian Lee. What enduring qualities do you think make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? Is it the film's timeless love story or its powerful performances? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to Waterloo Bridge? Perhaps you watched the film with a loved one or it inspired you to pursue a career in dance or film. Whatever your story may be, we would love to hear it. Share your memories and experiences in the comments below. 
the 1940 film Waterloo Bridge, directed by Mervyn Leroy, was a romantic drama set against the backdrop of World War I. The production faced several logistical challenges, including the set design and filming locations. The film's set design was intricate, with a significant portion of it taking place on the Waterloo Bridge in London. However, due to the limitations of filming in London during that time, the production team decided to build a massive set in MGM studio lot in Culver City, California. The set was built to scale, complete with cobblestone streets, lampposts, and buildings on either side of the bridge. The result was a convincing replica of the actual Waterloo Bridge. The film's locations were primarily set in London, but due to the ongoing war, the production team could not film on location. Instead, they used matte paintings and special effects to create the illusion of London cityscape. These techniques allowed the film to maintain its historical accuracy while ensuring the safety and feasibility of the production. One innovative technique employed during the production of Waterloo Bridge was the use of rear projection. This technique involved filming actors in front of a screen projecting a previously filmed background, creating the illusion that the actors were in a different location. This technique allowed the production team to film indoor scenes that appeared to take place outside, adding depth and realism to the film. Despite the challenges, the production team of Waterloo Bridge was able to create a convincing and engaging film. The set design, location, and innovative techniques used in the production all contributed to the film's success and continue to captivate audiences today. Waterloo Bridge is a worthy remake of the 1931 film, telling the story of war-torn lovers. Robert Taylor plays the British officer, and Vivian Lee plays the dancer who fall in love after meeting on Waterloo Bridge. However, before they can marry, he's called off to the war. During the war, money is hard to come by, and after she hears that he's been killed in action, she begins working as a prostitute. To her surprise, he walks back into her life. Lee's performance is downright terrific in this film. She perfectly sells her innocence in the early scenes, and then shows off her anguish at the end. She captures the sad and lonely spirit of the character, making for a great on-screen combination with Taylor. This is the best I've ever seen Taylor, who nails all his scenes, especially the opening and closing sequences where he says all we need to know with just his eyes. The supporting cast, including Lucille Watson, Virginia Field, and Maria Ausmanskaya, adds great support to the two leads. While this version is watered down compared to the original, it still contains all the power and emotion of the story. The film is a great example of a classic Hollywood love story from the Golden Age. Overall, Waterloo Bridge is a pretty good film, with Lee and Taylor delivering standout performances. Despite some melodramatic elements, the film is a worthy remake of the original and is sure to leave a lasting impression on viewers. The music in the 1940 film Waterloo Bridge was composed by Victor Young, a renowned musician and composer of the time. The score and soundtrack were crucial in enhancing the film's narrative and emotional tone. The film's music is a blend of romantic and dramatic themes, reflecting the character's emotions and the unfolding storyline. For instance, the main theme, a waltz, is used to express the blossoming love between the two main characters, Myra and Roy. The waltz's rhythm and melody create a sense of lightness, joy, and anticipation, contrasting with the film's tragic narrative. Victor Young's approach to composing the score was to create music that would intensify the emotional impact of the scenes without overpowering them. He used leitmotifs, recurring musical themes associated with specific characters or ideas, to build a sense of continuity and cohesion throughout the film. The soundtrack also includes several popular songs of the era, which were carefully chosen to complement the narrative. For example, the song We'll Meet Again is used to express hope and longing, reflecting the character's separation due to the war. The musicians involved in creating the film's music also played a significant role. The Hollywood Studio Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Victor Young, brought the score to life, adding depth and richness to the music. The result is a score that not only complements the narrative and emotional tone of the film, but also stands on its own as a piece of art. In creating the music for Waterloo Bridge, Victor Young and the other musicians involved managed to enhance the film's narrative, amplify its emotional tone, and create a timeless score that continues to captivate audiences today. The costumes in the World War I scenes of Waterloo Bridge, although well executed, seem to reflect the early World War II era more. Ethel Griffiths played the landlady in both the 1931 and 1940 versions, her character named Mistress Hobley in the former and Mistress Clark in the latter. This film, despite being less well-known in the West, has gained significant popularity in China 
particularly among college students. It's even used as a tool for English practice. The reason for its popularity in China is unclear, but it may be due to the popularity of Gone with the Wind and a desire to see more films featuring Vivian Lee. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1940 movie Waterloo Bridge is the ballet sequence, where Myra, played by Vivian Lee, performs the dance of the dead swan. The scene is a masterclass in cinematography, with low-key lighting and long shots that highlight Lee's expressive movements. The camera work is slow and deliberate, mirroring the tragic theme of the dance. Director Mervyn Leroy used this scene to show Myra's emotional turmoil, as she is torn between her love for Roy and her duty to her ballet company. Lee's performance is heart-wrenching, with every move and gesture conveying Myra's inner conflict. The actress later said in an interview that this scene was one of her favorites in the movie, as it allowed her to express her character's emotions without dialogue. The ballet sequence is also a visual feast, with the use of shadows and contrasting light creating a haunting atmosphere. The set design is minimalistic, with a black backdrop and simple props, putting the focus solely on Lee's performance. The cinematography, coupled with Lee's emotive acting, makes this scene one of the most memorable in the film. The impact of this scene on the audience is profound, as it encapsulates the tragic theme of the movie and the doomed love between Myra and Roy. The ballet sequence is a poignant reminder of the sacrifices that Myra has to make to survive in a world that is harsh and unforgiving. It is a testament to Lee's acting prowess and Leroy's direction that this scene has endured as one of the most iconic in cinema history. The 1940 film Waterloo Bridge holds a significant place in the history of cinema. It was the final film for actress Vivian Connie Emerald, who left a lasting impression in the industry. One of the most memorable scenes in the movie is the dance sequence between the characters Myra and Roy, set to the tune of Auld Lang Syne. Initially, dialogue was planned for this scene, but it was ultimately decided to let the images speak for themselves. This decision, made by director Mervyn Leroy, resulted in one of the most celebrated scenes of the film. Among Vivian Lee's films, Waterloo Bridge was her personal favorite, highlighting its significance in her career. The 1940 movie Waterloo Bridge, directed by Mervyn Leroy, had a significant cultural and social impact. The film, a romantic drama set against the backdrop of World War I, told the story of a ballerina who turns to prostitution after her fiancé is reported missing in action. Waterloo Bridge resonated with audiences due to its emotional depth and exploration of themes such as love, sacrifice, and survival during wartime. The film's portrayal of the harsh realities faced by women during World War I, particularly those who turned to sex work, sparked conversations about the societal impact of war on vulnerable populations. The movie also influenced pop culture, with its iconic scene of the protagonist, Myra, standing on Waterloo Bridge in the rain becoming an enduring image in cinema history. The film score, composed by Herbert Stothart, was also widely popular and added to the film's emotional impact. Waterloo Bridge contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes, such as the role of women in society and the impact of war on mental health. The film's exploration of these themes was groundbreaking for its time and helped to challenge societal norms and stereotypes. Overall, Waterloo Bridge left a lasting impact on audiences and pop culture and its exploration of relevant social and cultural themes continues to resonate today. The film Waterloo Bridge, first aired in various cities between 1956 and 1958, was a subject of censorship due to the Hayes Code. Prostitution, which the character Meyer resort to, couldn't be explicitly named in the dialogue, only vaguely hinted at. Meyer's confession to Lady Margaret was coded, enabling Lady Margaret to infer the truth. Vivian Lee, who played Myra, had hoped Lawrence Olivier would portray Roy Cronin. However, MGM insisted that Olivier play Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice, a production concurrent with Waterloo Bridge. The film's distribution in New York City was delayed until 1958, despite its earlier airing in several other cities. Waterloo Bridge, a 1940 American romantic drama film, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The film, directed by Mervyn Leroy and starring Vivian Lee and Robert Taylor, was praised for its emotional depth and strong performances. The New York Times critic, Bosley Crowther, commended the film for its intelligent and sensitive direction and excellent performances by the lead actors. He highlighted Vivian Lee's touching and sympathetic portrayal of a destitute woman turned prostitute and Robert Taylor's handsome and understanding performance as a soldier who falls in love with her. The film also received positive reviews from Variety, 
which praised the exceptional cast and moving storyline. The reviewer noted that the film's sensitive and restrained treatment of a taboo subject matter made it a standout among other films of the time. Waterloo Bridge was also a hit with audiences who were moved by the film's emotional story and strong performances. The film was a box office success, grossing over $2 million in its initial release. The film received four Academy Award nominations, including Best Actress for Vivian Lee, Best Cinematography, Best Art Direction, and Best Original Score. While it did not win in any of these categories, the nominations themselves were a testament to the film's quality and the talent involved in its production. These accolades were significant for those involved in the film, as they recognized the hard work and dedication that went into making Waterloo Bridge a success. The nomination and positive reviews helped to establish the film as a classic of the romantic drama genre and solidified the reputations of the actors and filmmakers involved. The film's enduring popularity and critical acclaim are a testament to its timeless appeal and emotional power. In 1940, a film called Waterloo Bridge was released, which may be one of the earliest Hollywood productions to incorporate the Second World War I NTO its narrative. This occurred just a few months after the German and Soviet invasion of Poland, and in the midst of the invasion of France and the Low Countries, the movie left a lasting impression, so much so that six years later, in 1946, it was adapted into a 30-minute radio broadcast by the Screen Guild Theater, with Robert Taylor reprising his original film role. Waterloo Bridge also marks the debut of Clara Reed, an actress who made her first appearance in this movie. Her performance was well received and helped launch her career in the film industry. In the making of Waterloo Bridge, Vivian Lee, who played the lead role, had to prepare extensively for her character's tragic transformation. She spent hours studying ballet to accurately portray a ballerina who turns to prostitution during World War II. Lee's dedication was such that she continued practicing ballet even after the filming wrapped up. Robert Taylor, Lee's co-star, found himself in a challenging situation when he had to perform a scene where he slaps Lee's character. Reportedly, Taylor felt uncomfortable doing this and apologized to Lee between takes. Despite the discomfort, they managed to complete the scene convincingly, contributing significantly to the film's emotional depth. The film's director, Mervyn Leroy, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He insisted on filming the crowd scenes at Waterloo Bridge as authentically as possible. To achieve this, he hired hundreds of extras, including genuine war veterans and war workers, to create a realistic wartime atmosphere. The set of Waterloo Bridge was designed by Cedric Gibbons, who won an impressive 11 Academy Awards for Best Art Direction throughout his career. The set was built with remarkable precision, featuring detailed replicas of the actual Waterloo Bridge and its surrounding area. This meticulousness added a layer of authenticity that greatly enhanced the film's overall impact. Despite the film's serious subject matter, there were moments of lightheartedness during the production. Vivian Lee and Robert Taylor reportedly shared a close bond off-screen, often laughing and joking together between takes. This camaraderie translated into a palpable chemistry on screen, further elevating the film's quality. In conclusion, Waterloo Bridge's production was marked by dedication, authenticity, and camaraderie. The cast and crew's collective efforts resulted in a compelling film that continues to resonate with audiences today. Ethel Griffiths played a significant role in both versions of Waterloo Bridge, first as Mistress Hobley in 1931, and then as Mistress Clark in the 1940 adaptation. Interestingly, Robert Taylor, who starred in the 1940 film, considered it his favorite, despite feeling miscast as a British officer. The film has also received praise from notable figures such as Jack Benny, who considered it one of Mervyn Leroy's best works, and Vivian Lee, who called it her best performance, having just completed Gone with the Wind. Leroy himself held the film in high regard, acknowledging the praise it received from his peers. Released in 1940, Waterloo Bridge is a classic romance film that has significantly influenced cinema. It tells the story of a ballerina who becomes a prostitute during World War I to support herself, only to be reunited with a soldier she had fallen in love with. The film, directed by Mervyn Leroy, is known for its strong emotional impact and the remarkable performances of its leads, Vivian Lee and Robert Taylor, Waterloo Bridge has left an indelible mark on film history. Its exploration of love, sacrifice, and survival during wartime has resonated with audiences and inspired numerous filmmakers. The film's innovative use of long takes, dramatic lighting, and poignant score have also influenced future filmmaking techniques. 
The movie's influence can be seen in various films and television shows that have followed. For instance, the 1957 film A Farewell to Arms, directed by Charles Vidor, shares similar themes of love and war. The 1994 film The Scarlet Letter, directed by Roland Jaffe, also explores the theme of societal stigma and the sacrifices one makes for love. Waterloo Bridge has also inspired adaptations, such as the 1931 film Waterloo Bridge and the 1994 remake of the same name, directed by Meryl Zanuck and starring Miranda Richardson and Chris O'Donnell. These adaptations pay homage to the original film while adding their unique perspectives. In addition to its influence on filmmaking, Waterloo Bridge has also inspired various stage productions, including a 2013 play by the same name, written by Robert Wedby and directed by Michael Siebold. Overall, Waterloo Bridge has had a lasting impact on film history, inspiring future filmmakers and audiences with its powerful storytelling and innovative techniques. Its exploration of love, sacrifice, and survival during wartime continues to resonate with audiences today. Robert Taylor expressed his fondness for the movie Waterloo Bridge and its lead actress, Vivian Lee, in interviews. Lee, in turn, cherished her role as Myra Lester in the same film. The memorable dance scene in the movie, set to Auld Lang Syne, features musicians extinguishing their candles until the piece ends in darkness. This concept was first introduced by Joseph Hayden in his Symphony No. 45, The Farewell. Barbara Stanwyck, Taylor's wife at the time, responded positively when she heard about her husband's admiration for Lee, stating, he's got good taste. In 1837, a British law was enacted to prevent clandestine marriages, restricting marriage ceremonies to between 8 a.m. and noon, which was later extended to 3 p.m. in 1886 and 6 p.m. in 1934. This historical context forms a major plot point in the 1940 movie, Waterloo Bridge, where the characters Kitty and Roy face this limitation. Interestingly, Jean Prescott made her debut in this very film on the same day that Waterloo Bridge premiered. Rotterdam was bombed by the German Luftwaffe, marking a significant event during World War II. The British Royal Air Force had already begun bombing German cities on May 11, 1940. As the raid on Rotterdam started, a Dutch officer was walking across a bridge, carrying a white flag of parley. This real-life incident coincides with the fictional narrative of the movie, adding a layer of historical depth to the film. Robert Taylor, the accomplished actor, had a soft spot for the film Waterloo Bridge. Unlike many of his films, Taylor did not own a copy of Waterloo Bridge, but in his later years, he expressed the desire to acquire a print of it. He even watched it multiple times during his final months. Waterloo Bridge holds a unique place in Taylor's filmography as it was the first film where he sported a mustache. This film, therefore, holds a special significance for Taylor, setting it apart from his other works. The 1940 film Waterloo Bridge features Russian actress Maria Ospenskaya as the demanding ballet mistress, Madame Olga. Ospenskaya had previously studied at the Moscow Art Theater under Konstantin Stanislavsky, and later taught Lee Strasberg, who became the director of the actor's studio in New York. She is best known for her role as Maleva in Universal's The Wolf Man and its sequel, Many classically trained actors of the time, including Ospenskaya, found greater artistic fulfillment in live theater, even though film work was more profitable. The play Waterloo Bridge first opened on Broadway in New York City in 1930 and ran for 64 performances. The film adaptation features the iconic location of Waterloo Bridge, which has also been used in the science fiction movie Edge of Tomorrow and David Bowie's music video for Absolute Beginners. The bridge offers a striking view of the River Thames and has become a significant location in popular culture. I'd like to invite you to share your memories and experiences related to the 1940 movie, Waterloo Bridge. This film is a true classic that has touched the hearts of many. Did it move you in some way? Or perhaps it made you see cinema differently? We'd love to hear your thoughts and how this movie has impacted you personally. Whether you were deeply moved by the story or found it influenced your perspective on film, your voice matters. By sharing your experiences, you can enrich our understanding of this classic movie and its enduring appeal. So, don't be shy. We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to join the conversation and explore more cinematic treasures together.